Welcome back. We're going to call this part four. In part four, we're going to fix our speaker cone. As you can clearly see, it has some tears in it. There's one there, and there's one there. The surround is kind of beat up around this edge, and uh, the speaker is so dry that I really don't trust it anymore. But there's a solution. If you go over to B. Anderson TV, or Bob Anderson's channel, you're going to see a tutorial on how to repair damaged speakers. And I'm going to use his method because it seems to work. Bob's video shows how Aileen's Tacky Glue is one of the best glues you can use for speaker repair because it remains very flexible well after it dries. This is actually, I can, I can speak to this product um, because I used it back in kindergarten to make macaroni art. This is what my uh, teacher was using in the classroom. It's a great product and uh, it's never changed. This is, this, in fact, this bottle design has never changed. It looks exactly like it did when I was in kindergarten. I've actually used this before on speaker repair because I did a, um, I did surround repair work on my Boston Acoustics uh, speakers that I had a couple years ago. And anyway, so we're going to put some of this in a bowl. Now Bob said he used uh, two parts glue to one part water. But I'm just going to mix it up into a kind of a light consistency. For typical speaker repairs, all you've got to do is coat the damaged area and you're fine. But I'm going to go one step further. I'm going to do the entire speaker cone. I'm going to coat it in, uh, in this watered-down glue-like substance. Because what it will actually do is it will reduce the risk of cone damage in the future and it will prevent it from really getting any worse. Um, so we're just going to mix some water in there. Warm water. But as per Bob's instructions, come on. There we go. A little bit of water. And it's a little too much water. But I think it'll be fine. We're just gonna mix it up into a Oops, get that on film here. Get on the camera there. There we go. I'm uh, not quite there. Let's move it over just a wee bit more. I'm going to just mix it up, get it nice and dissolved. We don't want it to be in paste form. We want it kind of a, a liquid. And the object is <coughs> to get this stuff to soak into the cone slightly. It's going to look like milk. In fact, this looks more like... I bet you this is what they use when they, uh, when they make cereal advertisements. Actually, there is some truth to that. They really do use glue in place of milk. It looks better on camera. Fun fact. I think they use Elmer's glue, actually. A little more there and there. Make it nice and thick. Probably too much. But we don't need to go crazy. We don't need to go mental. We don't want all that much glue, but we want it to. We want it to dry to a nice uh, tacky. Let's see how that looks. Mix it up a little more. All right. So what we're going to do is we're going to paint this stuff right into the crack. That's whoa, 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 whoa! Too watery, too watery. All right. I may have gone crazy there. I use too much. Now it's starting to get into the uh, voice coil. I don't want that. But anything paper, soak this stuff right up. I might have to do this again and maybe thicken the uh, mixture up just a wee bit. But as Bob did, he just sort of kind of went right in there. And what I did is it just helped bind the fibers back together again. His words, not mine. I will not take credit for this. This is uh, purely uh, the work of a genius, and uh, I can't take credit for his work. So I wish I would have thought of this, but hey, he did. He thought of it first, I think. Okay. <laughs>
that. All right, so we're going to get it right in there. This is not going to hurt the speaker. This is going to improve its long-term durability. I think my mixture might be a little weak. So I'm going to let this dry, and then we're going to probably look at it again and see what happens. Now there's a tear right there. We're going to make sure to get that. Make sure it goes on nice and even. Okay. We'll see how it looks in a couple hours when it dries thoroughly. I may have to, uh, to do it again with a thicker mixture. We also want to make sure we get the surround. How does that look from the other side? You can't really tell. We've got it painted on, um, at least on the damaged area on the other side as well. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna put more glue in this. I think it's a little too watery. But we'll let that soak in first. We're wasting a lot of glue here. Um, that's all right. The stuff is also very inexpensive. This was a dollar, dollar seventy-five, I think, for a four-ounce bottle, eight-ounce bottle. Oh shit! <laughs> it wasn't. It wasn't expensive, so I'm not worried about it. Uh, this was very inexpensive glue, considering how good it is. I can't really complain about the price. Oh look, Bob's Burgers is on. I love that show. Okay, a little more. Still a little thin. A little, a little too watery for my taste. Yeah. Bob did a much better job when he did his because, well, he's experienced. <laughs> All right, that's a little thicker. One of the what I was going to do before I saw his video is actually use um, enamel. I was going to go out and get some clear enamel and just go to town. But as I learned from him, the enamel will dry out and crack, and that's kind of the exact opposite of the effect we want. So we're going to put in a little more of that glue. Mute. There we go. But I wanted to make sure the speaker actually works before I try something like this because I don't want to waste my time. Sure enough, the speaker works. It roared to life as you saw in my, one of my earlier videos. There we go. Now we've got a nice thick, nice thick coating there. Just paint it right on. This will make a difference. Yeah. The thing is, if we don't do this, the speaker will just continue to degrade um, for years and years and years until it finally just doesn't have any integrity at all. We're also going to paint this around now that we've got our nice thick mixture going on. Uh, paint this around, especially where the damaged area is. I don't know if they used acid paper back then or not, but I have, um, you know, the newer papers, especially from the 1960s and later, maybe even the 50s, contain a lot of acid. And as a result, they basically self-destruct. Now on my kitchen table, I'm gonna show you this. Oops. On my kitchen table, I have this. This is an 1891 edition of Scientific American. You probably can't see that very well. Oh, I'm zoomed in, there we go. Now this, is what paper should look like after 120 some odd years. Um, 100 and 125 years. Um, this is what it should look like. But unfortunately, paper made to, uh, in recent years 
contains acid, which helps the paper to basically decompose on its own. All right. And uh, that can also affect uh, speaker cones. We're going to paint this around. This will not negatively affect the sound quality. If anything, it will improve it because you won't have the, the damaged areas rubbing against each other. Instead, they're going to move as one. And that's, uh, that's the goal here. But the paper is starting to buckle a little bit. But that's okay. Once it dries, it'll be fine. Uh, unless I can find a, a source for a replacement speaker cone, this is just going to have to be the solution I, I, uh, I wind up with. So. I just want to really get in there. Kind of paint that crack back together again. And the other defects that I found later on. And I think we've gone all the way around by now, so uh, we're going to just let this dry and uh, hope for the best. But yeah, you can't really go to Walmart and buy a speaker like this because this <laughs> contains a field coil, which is technology that hasn't been used in quite some time. And all right. Give that a few hours to dry, and it should be good to go. Once it dries, I'm going to coat the other side um, of the cracked areas, but we're not going to worry about anything else. We're going to just let that that cure. Yeah, that's what we're going to do. All righty. Okay. Let's see what happens. And that's what it looks like when. The tacky glue is dry, like it never happened. Um, I did uh, notice that the speaker had stiffened up quite a bit as a result of the, uh, the tacky glue, but, you know, it was kind of a necessary evil. I mean, the speaker, without it, was prone to even more degradation, so I had to do something, I, you know. Um, and I'm considering doing it to the other side as well. At least uh, to this crack area. I want to make sure that this is... But you can see it's... I mean, it's repaired. So, I'm going to put another coat of glue on the back side of that crack just to give it some more rigidity. Um, I noticed that the surround had loosened up in some areas. It was actually kind of uh, detached here. But once that glue solidified, it reattached itself. So, hurrah for that. The speaker cone still, or the surround still has flex to it. It's just not as much as it used to. I mean, I'm, 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 I'm moving the cone right now. and So, I hooked it up to the, uh, to the set just to make sure that it was, uh, you know, good to go. And it sounds okay. Uh, a little, uh, a little tight, a little uh, high pitched, but it sounds all right. But you know, it's uh, <laughs> you had to do something to preserve it. Um, but I'm going to do the other side as well. I figured I'd wait until that dried, and now I'm going to paint the other side of the cone as best I can to protect it. But I, I don't think it's necessary. I really don't. I really don't think it's necessary, so I'm probably not going to do that. Um, I don't want to stiffen it up anymore. You know what I mean? And you can see this is really where the repaired the repairs were made, and uh, really that surround was in pretty rough shape. It, it doesn't. I, I'd like to replace the whole surround. I'll be honest with you. Um, I just, but the problem with that is I can't center the cone. If I disconnect the surround, I have no way of centering the cone because right in the middle it has this uh, built-in centering disc. I guess centering it wouldn't be—it wouldn't really matter at that point, would it? Because it would self-center. 
side of that. But, uh, yeah. It's better than it was. But for my first ever speaker repair, well, of this nature, I guess I didn't do too bad. I am I am worried about that surround getting any worse or any tighter because we don't we certainly the job of the surround is to allow the cone to move in and out freely and uh, uh, ideally if I could get a replacement that would be that would be the bee's knees but I'm not so sure that would be effective uh, given the state of everything else so. All right, I'm going to put this mess away and move on. I was going to power this up for the video, but I don't want to do that just yet. I want to wait until everything is all said and done, and then I'll have a we'll have a nice listening session when everything is finished. And I can proudly call this project completed and check it off my list of things I need to do. Until then, guys, have a When it's mounted in its box, I think it'll sound 100% better. But I'm not really getting much. Too bad. With nail head trim and wood turned legs. With a look like this, tradition never goes out of style. Find more tips at Style for Life now. Uh, the suspect in the murder of police officer Randolph Holder has just been charged with murder one. Tyrone Howard, murder one and robbery one. More from Vicki Allen in just a moment. Right now at 7.58, traffic and weather together on the 8th and here is Steve Reggie. And we have that accident in Hempstead. It's westbound Southern State Parkway, an accident by exit 30. At least one lane is blocked there. In New Jersey, southbound Garden State Parkway, two lanes are blocked at Metro Park exit 131. you got delays starting around the Colonia rest stop heading southbound. And one, one thing to consider real quickly here is that the face of the radio acts as almost like a soundboard. So it's going to sound more uh, bassy or deeper or thicker uh, when it's mounted in the box. The rear of the console or the rear of the box um, also adds to the uh, to the sound resonance. Of course, right, uh, any bare speaker is going to sound you know terrible when it's not mounted to anything. Um, what I'm trying to do though is eliminate all the buzzing. Or um, there's a few you can. I just heard a little bit. There's a little bit of a buzz in there. I got to find out where that's coming from and try to. Pin it down. In the WCBS Weather Center. 66 degrees right now in New York, as we remember in the life of one of the three dog nights, Corey Wells, who's died at the age of 73. We'll see you tomorrow. I'm Wayne Cabot. News, traffic, and weather for New York, New Jersey, and Connecticut. We are News Radio. Let's do some let's do some short wave surfing here. Allegedly, you can still hear some air traffic communications um, when they're out in international waters. Police. Right. <laughs> Not today.
Fun for now. Thanks for. 